Greetings, all! Today, we are going to take a special look at the water type, and analyze its attributes, the Pokémon assigned to the type, and how it functions from a combative standpoint. Existing as the most common known type of them all, the water type is a universal type that can make the most of the power of water, both physically and chemically, to break down the hardest of barriers and drown those that might dare to underestimate it. This is a type whose attributes are so commonplace that there are entire trainer classes basically devoted to the type, and in turn is one that the high seas and lakes and ponds across the world are home to an abundance of, making or breaking teams depending on whether or not they can overcome its attributes to make a dent in those assigned to the type. It might not have a ton of extremely powerful Pokémon to its name, but the water type is nonetheless one that can wash away the competition and make it known to the world just what kind of power water can bring to a fight when properly weaponized for combat, both up close and afar. The water type itself is pretty easy to define at a basic level, as it primarily consists of Pokémon that all live near or within bodies of water, and those that are able to use water as an actual weapon in battle. This is commonly achieved by being able to store and release vast quantities of water from their bodies in the form of high-pressure streams, bubbles, waves, and other forms, or by being able to infuse the power of water into an attack to deal damage in a way that matches the offensive type advantages and disadvantages of the type. However, while this might seem simplistic at the surface, in truth, the definition of the type can be a lot harder to define in certain cases, as water is such a universal component to life as we know it, that it can come in a variety of forms, with some Pokémon assigned to the type only having defensive attributes that match it, being unable to actually learn any damaging moves of the type. Even so, these creatures are able to live in and out of the water freely as they wish, and often use water as a natural form of life enhancement, their bodies being able to heal from exposure to it or otherwise require it to survive, as is the case with many fish Pokémon and similar groups, or as a direct weapon in combat. This can especially be seen in the way water-type attacks are delivered, as special attacks primarily rely on water alone to deal damage, while physical ones generally involve the use of an appendage coated in water or delivered while in the water, acting as both simple tools of combat and devastating strikes that can make the presence of the type more than known on the battlefield. As a whole, the type presents itself as not only the most common of types in terms of sheer numbers, but also one with few strong counters, making it a bit tricky to deal with and in turn a type that can be relied on for both bulk and offense, depending upon the Pokémon being analyzed under the type. Because of the very vague way in which the water type is defined among Pokémon, the type shows a considerable degree of variety with life forms of many different groups being a part of it, a level of diversity that is not seen among any other type. Because of this, it is very hard to say what group truly dominates the type, even though fish and fish-like Pokémon constitute the largest group, with creatures like mammals, crustaceans, birds, mollusks, and others being common members as well. This extreme versatility means that creatures from all walks of life can possess the type and make good use of it in a fight, and as a whole, the type's biological versatility can make it a hard one to plan for, as the individual powers and attributes of these creatures can force trainers to make split decisions about how to handle these creatures, and in turn, the unique way in which they can weaponize the water type for use by their owners in battle. However, on that same note, while the water type can be found among creatures from many different branches on the Tree of Life, they do share a common thread in that many of them show limited offensive abilities outside of their water type offenses and attributes, with exceptions mainly coming as a result of a secondary type assignment or from rarer cases where versatility is present naturally. Moreover, while they might have access to TMs and HMs for assistance, in most cases, aside from basic normal type attacks gained naturally and artificially, they tend to be limited in what moves can be taught artificially, with only the ice type being a common striking point for many water types through these methods. Even so, these creatures can pull out some unique tricks with the moves that they do have access to, and with access to powerful attacks like Hydro Pump being extremely common among Pokémon of the type, the moves they learn can definitely help to overcome their lack of diversity in their move pools and compensate for it with added power across a spectrum of different species and forms. In terms of stat averages, the water type is one where the stats of the type not only reflect the well-rounded nature of the type and the variety of different Pokémon that are a part of it, but, perhaps a bit surprisingly, is also one of the few types where there are no real advantages to the type regarding its stats, 
as the type stats all fall below the average values for each of the six base stats calculated across all known types. On the one hand, this makes the type, despite its commonality, less effective than even the basic normal type, a consequence of many of the Pokémon assigned to the type being closer to animals in their powers than some might like, limiting their statistical strengths and rendering them little more than fodder to many types of stronger opponents. On the other hand, though, this belittles the incredible power that some water types possess, so it should not be seen as a blanket statement used to describe all of them. In terms of the type's best stats, though well-rounded as a whole, these creatures show good physical defenses on account of the presence of either scales or thick skin of some sort, and their special offenses are generally on the higher side compared to their physical ones, though that form of offense serves as the type's third highest base stat, resulting in Pokémon under the type specializing in defense, special attack, and attack. The Pokémon assigned to the type may not often be the strongest of fighters, but they can still hold their own in the right cases, and more than overcome their weaker stats to make an impact in any fight they are a part of. Currently, there are 133 recognized types of water-type Pokémon, 62 of them being pure water-types and the remaining 71 being dual-types. Additionally, 54 of the dual-types are primary water-types, while the remaining 17 are secondary water-types. They are broken down into the following categories. Fish and fish-like These creatures are unified by the fact that they are fish, or are at least fish-like in their form, and in turn are cold-blooded creatures that generally remain in the water at all times due to a notable lack of air-breathing lungs. There are exceptions to this rule, such as with the members of the Mudkip family, but as a whole, these creatures are adapted to life in the water alone, and in turn, can be difficult to deal with when using them in a fight. Even so, these creatures can possess a variety of different powers and abilities, and in turn, can bring a great deal of versatility to the battlefield, even if they are commonly linked by their ability to use water as a projectile to deal damage as their primary means of offense. Birds These creatures are unified by the fact that they are birds, though it is noted that only the members of the Wingull and Ducklet families have managed to retain the ability to fly. The members of the Piplup family are penguins and gave up their capacity to fly long ago in favor of stronger swimming abilities and have managed to develop a body form that makes them more streamlined and tolerant to extreme cold. The members of the Psyduck family, on the other hand, though related to ducks as evidenced in their bills and feathery bodies as Psyduck, traded in their flight abilities for enhanced swimming abilities and the capacity to use psychic power, a trade-off that has helped to make them far more versatile than other Pokémon in this category. Mammals These creatures are unified by the fact that they are mammals, and although they might share the water type as a common ground, this tends to be the only thing that they share in common from a biological perspective. The wide variety of water type mammals is a testament to the versatility and commonness of the type, and helps to show that the type can be found among many different biological groups, even within the boundaries of a single category. This diversity goes a long way to making these creatures difficult to pin down and attack with a common threat of some sort, but at the same time, they are still very much limited to their water-type powers for their primary means of offense, and thus can be somewhat easy to counter from a defensive standpoint if this is taken into account. Reptiles These creatures are unified by the fact that they are reptiles, and possess bodies and biological forms that very much resemble the scaly creatures outside of Pokémon that live within the depths of bodies of water. While the members of the Squirtle and Totodile families occupy different branches on the reptile end of the Tree of Life, their cold-blooded nature means that they usually can only live in warm and temperate environments at best, and they are very much reliant on their water-type powers and basic attacks with their body for offense, gaining little more in the way of versatility naturally. Even so, these creatures can be surprisingly powerful and are able to adapt to live on land for long periods of time, so they can still prove to be a serious threat in a fight, even if they must confront others outside of the bodies of water they call home. Amphibians These creatures are unified by the fact that they are amphibians, and are thus able to survive in and out of the water freely to some extent or another. These Pokémon, though immensely varied in form, are all alike in that they enjoy living in the water, but are able to survive on the surface for extended periods of time to hunt for food or avoid predators, though they must always eventually return to the water to rehydrate themselves. While most of them are able to naturally mature in evolution to reach an adult state, 
Pokemon, like the members of the Wooper and Poliwag families, have managed to find a way to reach adult states without having to necessarily become true adults, and thus offer some unique biological variety to this group to help make it seem more diverse away from simple frogs and toads. Jellyfish These creatures are unified by the fact that they are jellyfish, though they far surpass traditional jellyfish in terms of not only their unique powers, but also their general intelligence. The members of the tentacool family are expert hunters that can use their powerful toxins to incapacitate and kill prey with relative ease, with tentacruel in particular being notorious predators that are powerful enough to poison and strangle even Waylord to death. The members of the frillish family, on the other hand, specialize in using spectral powers to drain the life energy of others to feed, and are unique for their ghost-type attributes, dragging their prey deep below the water and draining them of their life as they slowly suffocate and drown in the depths of the ocean waters they occupy. Mollusks These creatures are unified by the fact that they are mollusks, generally classified as such because of their somewhat benign existence and their reliance on the filtration of microorganisms out of the waters they occupy. Although Remoraid in particular look like fish, they only retain this appearance on the outside, being internally built like their evolved form Octillery. While most of these creatures lack any significant form of physical defense to protect themselves with, Clamperl and the members of the Shelter family in particular possess sturdy shells that can be very difficult if not impossible to break without some form of extreme physical punishment. Fion and Manaphy are unique among this group for their surprising array of powers. While Fion are nothing truly special and rather weak in regards to their combat abilities, Manaphy are legendary creatures that have the capacity to control and be calm any life form in the water, a trait significant enough to occasionally garner the support of otherwise uncontrollable legendary beasts like Kyogre that in turn makes them truly legendary creatures in their own right. Crustaceans These creatures are unified by the fact that they are crustaceans, though in terms of biology, they tend to be quite varied in form and combat ability. These Pokémon do have some common defining traits in the possession of a sturdy carapace that can help provide them some decent protection against assault, especially of the physical variety, and are able to make good use of physical attacks in many cases to bash apart those that would dare to get in their way. While some unique cases, like the members of the Clauncher family, do exist, these creatures as a whole are powerful physical brawlers and can definitely make themselves a threat in close quarters, especially considering some of the Pokémon in this category include the physically offensive Kingler and the monstrous Golisopod. Echinoderms These creatures are unified by the fact that they are Echinoderms, though with many of the other categories already mentioned, there is a great disparity between the Pokémon families that are a part of this category. While the members of the Staryu family are classified as starfish by most researchers, these creatures in truth share very little in common with starfish in terms of anatomy and are so bizarre in construction that they tread the line between organic life and machine. Both Staryu and Starmi are surprisingly intelligent and apparently have the capacity to communicate with others, but their reliance on the light given off by their cores as a means of transmitting data is beyond what we can currently understand. All that can be said is that these creatures are incredibly nimble despite their appearances and are able to wield many bizarre moves like camouflage and recover that are far beyond what similar life forms can utilize, both of which merely support and add on to their utterly complicated and incomprehensible lives. On the other hand, Marini and Toxapex behave and are biologically constructed in a way that more closely resemble a traditional echinoderm, in particular taking after the appearance and mannerisms of the Crown of Thorns sea star. These creatures are ruthless predators and hunt down Pokemon like Corsola with a passion, stabbing their prey with their toxin-laced outer spines and allowing the poison to paralyze them before ripping the coral off of them and devouring it with great earnest. Fossil Pokemon These Pokemon are unified by the fact that they were once completely, or at the very least almost completely extinct, before the power of modern science was used to bring them back to life. While their forms are quite varied in the biological identity, with the members of the Ammonite family being related to Ammonites, the Kabuto family existing as their own special niche on the Tree of Life, and the members of the Tortuga family being ancient turtles, they all possess partial rock-type assignments as a result of the process used to resurrect them, and in turn have similar biological weaknesses when compared to one another. 
Even so, they can still be quite varied in the way that they attack, with the Omnite family specializing in special offense, the Kabuto family physical offense, and the Tartuga family physical with a bit of special mixed in. They are all formidable creatures to go up against that can more than bring some true ancient power to the battlefield when never needed. Insectoid and Arachnid Morphs These Pokémon are not exactly unified in terms of their overall biology, but they are the only Insectoids and Arachnid Morphs that share the attributes of the water type and are thus categorized together. Surskit only retain their water type attributes in infancy and lose them as soon as they evolve, and even with them, they do not gain much in the way of water type offense and live fairly simple lives on the surface of the water. The members of the Dewpiter family, on the other hand, live in and out of the water and are able to use the substance to great effect by keeping their heads encased in a bubble of water at all times, not only allowing them to protect it against attack and use it to hunt down and kill other Pokemon, but also to using it to serve more important biological functions, such as helping them to breathe out of the water as their natural respiratory system is ill-equipped to deal with breathing air on the surface. Sharks this special category is reserved for the members of the Carvana family and are unique for being the only shark Pokemon that live in the water primarily. These creatures are incredibly ruthless and are able to deal considerable damage with their physical strikes, attacking with their powerful fangs and even their whole bodies with attacks like Night Slash and Skull Bash, in turn making them a serious threat in close quarters. They might not be able to take much in the way of damage, but these creatures can still prove to be a severe threat in any fight especially since Sharpedo has the capacity to mega-evolve to make itself even more of a dire threat. Plants This special category is reserved for the members of the Lotad family as a result of their unique bonding to a parasitic plant and the dominance it shows in their biological form. While they are effectively dominated by this plant in terms of the control they have over their body, these creatures eventually grow to use the plant to their advantage, taking back control as Lombre and eventually fusing with the plant as they mutate into Ludicolo when exposed to the radiant energy of a water stone. They may not be among the most powerful of Pokémon, but their unique combination of types nonetheless allows them to fulfill specific roles in a team that can make them tricky to deal with, especially since it means they do not take super effective damage from the two main types that the water type is weak against. Sea Cucumber This special category is reserved for Pukumuku, which live entirely in the water and are well known for their aquatic lifestyles and defensive abilities. These attributes, in turn, are the only real deciding factors for assigning a type to these organisms, as they are incapable of using any water-type moves to attack in battle. In fact, they do not have the capacity to learn any moves at all that directly deal damage. Because of this, they primarily feed on detritus on the ocean floor and do very little moving in their lives, if any at all, saving up as much energy as possible in case they have to utilize a defensive move of some sort to protect themselves or have to rely on their innards out ability to counterattack aggressive Pokemon. Spiritual This special category is reserved for Rotom when they are in their wash form, being the result of them possessing a special type of washing machine that is susceptible to their unique brand of possession. While in this state, these creatures become partial water types in losing their ghost type attributes, and while it does definitely help them increase their stats, as do the other forms that they can take, its biggest advantage is allowing them to learn the powerful Hydro Pump Attack, a move that can more than make them a serious threat against anything that dares to come at them with Pokémon weak to the type. Artificial This special category is reserved for a cast form while it is in its rainy form. Due to the nature of their molecular structure, cast form have the ability to alter their physical form when in the presence of certain types of weather conditions, manifested in their forecast ability, and in this case, this is the form that they take when there is intense rainfall present in an area. This causes their body to swell with large volumes of water for their size, and converts them into pure water types, in turn enabling them to make great use of the water type attacks they gain naturally, and deal powerful water type damage with their weather ball attack. Guardian Land Spirit this special category is reserved for Tapu Fini, the guardian spirit of Pony Island in the Alola region and the deity responsible for the appointment of Hanu and her father as the kahunas of the island in the recent past. In the past, this island guardian served alongside the other Tapu spirits in protecting the region against attacks from Ultra Beasts and Necrozma, 
and in turn helped establish the modern system of kahuna leaders at the island challenge. This mystical fairy has the power to enshroud any land that it comes across in a dense mist, heightening its natural powers and entrancing its enemies into destroying themselves, thus delivering swift and merciless justice to those that would dare to attack its island and its inhabitants. The ocean currents serve as a source of power for this guardian deity, and it is said that its control of water is so great that it can create pure water that will wash away the uncleanliness of others so that spiritual purity may be restored. Super Oceanic This special category is reserved for Kyogre, a beast said to be the greatest living creature to ever live within the oceans, and even believed to have been the actual source of the ocean's power in Hoenn mythology, a trait that makes sense in light of its drizzle ability and significant special powers. This becomes even more apparent when one considers its primal form as well, as its primordial sea ability is more than capable of drowning the entire planet in a matter of weeks, if not days. Kyogre is actually a rather benign life form and apparently only feeds on small fish and occasionally krill, though its intimidating appearance is more than enough to scare away most people. Despite being calm most of the time, Kyogre absolutely despises the existence of Groudon and has been known to generate thunderous downpours from engagements with its land-based rival. Such fights are intense enough to lead to utter terrestrial and planetary devastation, but these fights are usually always broken up by Rayquaza, which serves as the only life form that truly has complete dominance over both Kyogre and Groudon. Super Spatial this special category is reserved for Palkia, the legendary Pokémon said to be responsible for the creation and continued stabilization of space. Although Palkia is classified as a water-type Pokémon, this is only because of its capacity to utilize attacks like Aqua Tail and Hydro Pump effectively, and because it is generally less resistant against grass and electric-type offenses than a pure Dragon-type would be. Interestingly enough, though, these abnormal powers mix in well with Palkia's selection of space-rending powers although they are counterintuitive to space, as space is thought to be fixed in regard to the impossibility of creating and destroying matter and energy in nature, while time is seen as a fluid force that constantly flows from one point to another within all points of general reference, black holes notwithstanding, even if it does change depending on a traveler's motion. It is possible, however, that this trait reflects the fact that Palkia is still subject to the rules of time in normal conditions and is thus incomplete without it, to the point of taking on a form whose physical features are completely defined by its opposing but intertwined partner, Dialga. In looking at the water type's advantages and disadvantages in battle, in terms of offense, the water type has three advantages, three disadvantages, and no negative immunities. The type is at an advantage against the fire type because the flames that burn within and around fire type Pokemon often serve to fuel and accelerate their internal metabolic processes and are thus vital to their survival. The impact of a water-type attack can potentially dissipate or completely snuff out this source of heat, weakening their target in the process and dealing severe damage with even a weak attack, and in the case of some Pokémon, like the members of the Charmander family, it can prove to be lethal, as the snuffing out of these flames can permanently damage their ability to use fire-type attacks in the future and prove to be potentially life-threatening in the worst of cases. The type is at an advantage against the ground-type, because the bodies of ground-type Pokémon are often designed to be able to absorb and retain moisture to an exceptionally effective degree or to repel it as much as possible, in the case of Pokémon whose natural bodies are vulnerable to the effects of chemical breakdown from water. While they can get a little wet and still be fine, the forceful power of most water-type attacks is able to oversaturate their bodies and lead to a host of internal complications that can deal severe damage to them in a short period of time. As such, the Pokémon assigned to the ground type tend to avoid water at all costs and only come into contact with it either indirectly through their food or as drinking water, and can be so afraid of the substance that they might avoid battling against water types altogether if possible, even to the point of sometimes disobeying the orders of their trainers out of fear for their safety. The type is at an advantage against the rock type because water has the ability to chemically break down rocky armor quite readily, with even the weakest of moves having the potential to crack apart rocky armor if delivered at high velocities. Normally, this wouldn't necessarily be a huge problem, as the insides of Pokémon that are otherwise weak to the type can usually handle the damage dealt without serious issues, but because some types of rock-type Pokémon are comprised almost entirely or even entirely out of rock, these attacks have the potential to wear away at their insides and deal severe internal damage, 
making it one of the rock type's biggest weaknesses to have to worry about. The type is at a disadvantage against the grass type because the ability of grass types to naturally feed off of water for nutritional and energy producing purposes grants them a boosted resistance against its damaging effects. Even those that are not true plants can show this to some degree or another, taking in applied moisture and using it to rehydrate themselves. This can sometimes go so far as to allow them to absorb part of the water used in these moves and in turn weakening the overall impact as a whole, helping to solidify the grass type as one of the few types that can readily take down the water type with great gusto and force. The type is at a disadvantage against the water type because, as a consequence of living in the water, or at the very least having part of their bodies powered by it, water type Pokemon tend to be able to absorb the energy and contents used in water type attacks readily to replenish their own energy. This can apply to even physical strikes, since most of them still require the use of water to some extent. As such, this results in water type attacks having less of an impact on those Pokemon than normal, granting them a resistance against their own type. Lastly, the type is at a disadvantage against the Dragon type because of the Dragon type's renowned ability to readily suppress the damage dealt by a number of different natural elemental types, with the water type being one such elemental energy form they are able to take damage from and be relatively unfazed by in many cases. Defensively speaking, the water type has four resistances, two weaknesses, and no immunities. The type is resistant against the fire type because most water type Pokemon are able to use water to form a thin film around their body that not only keeps them moist, but also serves as a barrier against direct heat, as the impact of a fire type attack of any form will cause the water to vaporize into steam, resulting in much of the energy from the attack dissipating and thus weakening the impact of the fire type attack used against them. The same effect can be generated by using a water type attack directly to stop a fire type move in its tracks, potentially dissipating it completely or otherwise weakening the amount of energy delivered through the attack in the end. The type is resistant against the water type because, as mentioned already, water type Pokemon tend to be able to absorb the energy and contents used in water type attacks readily to replenish themselves, resulting in the type taking less damage against itself in a combat scenario. The type is resistant against the ice type because of unique chemical properties that make water so useful. Unlike other types of liquids, water actually expands when it freezes, and because the cell membranes of most water type Pokemon are able to take a little bit of expansion, they are not so heavily affected by these attacks, and their bodies can quickly return to a normal state after being frozen. This results in them having a unique resistance against the element that few other types have, and ultimately serves to help give them a bonus against ice type Pokemon that dwell in the water though their bodies can have the moisture driven out of them and severely damaged if struck by the freeze-dry attack due to its unique properties. The type is resistant against the steel type because of the corrosive power that the element often has on metallic armor. Most types of natural metallic armor are made of iron in some form, and as a result, they can rust if exposed to water for extended periods of time. This translates into water-type attacks as well, leading many using steel-type attacks to not deliver their attacks with as much force as they possibly can, fearful of the corrosive effects the liquid could have on their body. In the case of steel-type special attacks, the elemental properties of water further allow it to disperse the light-based energy attacks of steel-types and reduce their penetrating power, ultimately weakening the overall damage that they deal. The type is weak against the grass type because most grass types have the ability to use photosynthesis to produce energy, and one of the primary requirements for that process to occur is water. As such, many grass types have evolved to be able to effectively draw moisture from the ground and the air around them, and they can apply the same power to deal massive damage to water types, sucking the water from their bodies and leaving them heavily weakened in turn. This also applies for their energy-based attacks, as they can easily dispel the water inside a target and cause the same sort of damaging effect. Lastly, the type is weak against the electric type, because water is an excellent conductor of electricity as a result of any dissolved ions inside of it. These ions allow for charges to be passed readily through the liquid and can thus allow it to permeate every single cell in a creature and deliver the charge to the most well-protected areas, providing much less resistance to the flow of current and dealing immense damage to them in the process. This serves as one of the major weaknesses of the water type and a problem for them, since it is also one of the few offensive type advantages the electric type has, and while some water type families have partial ground type assignments to them, 
electricity is still something that is otherwise universally feared by these creatures and ultimately renders them completely vulnerable to even the most mild of electrical shocks. As far as using the water type in battle goes, it is a type that is so common that it would be foolhardy for anyone to go into a fight without some sort of counter against the type if they don't know what kind of Pokemon their opponent is packing. On the one hand, the type is limited from a terrestrial perspective as many of the Pokemon assigned to the type either need to be near water often or cannot survive out of water at all, limiting their capacity to battle against others in most combat scenarios and rendering them less than useful when a body of water cannot be used to keep them alive and hydrated at all times. The type also shows limited move variety regarding the Pokemon that are a part of it, with most being unable to learn anything substantial outside of basic normal water and ice type attacks, the latter commonly being due to artificial acquisition, and thus the type is unable to effectively deal with some of its counters well, namely electric types and other water types. The type can also be a bit difficult to work with sometimes, as the level of docility and control that trainers have over their Pokemon can vary widely, as while many water types can be easy to train and befriend, some, like Cloyster and Gyarados, can be extremely ornery and take great dedication to actually get them to effectively trust and listen to their trainer. Despite these flaws, though, the water type does still have some serious combat advantages, as many of the Pokemon assigned to the type can get access to its most powerful moves late in life, and it is gifted in only being weak to two types, making it a good, bulky type that trainers can rely on to take serious hits. The fact that the type is so common also makes it readily used by even novice trainers, and thus can be worked with fairly early on, allowing trainers to adapt to their water type Pokemon and their needs when they can afford to take the time to do so. In addition, the fact that the type can be found in combination with every other type known makes it highly versatile in battle, especially in combination with the type's prevailing powerhouse attack, Hydro Pump, and its fairly common occurrence among Pokemon of the type. This works to create a type that can take and deal damage readily from all standpoints and make the most of a difficult situation, helping to bring the water type to the forefront of serious battle strategies and render it one worth relying on when one cannot expect what the opposition will bring to the table to simply take their blows and blast them to pieces with the incredible force that water is capable of delivering under the right circumstances.